Andiamo. Un attimo, devo fare il video. Hey all and welcome to a new JavaScript video. This is the third part of uh, our tutorial on how to create this Jitter JavaScript object that will allow us to click on these videos here in this uh, rendering window and then get the name and the path of these videos out of our JavaScript object. So in this third part, we are going to see how to identify the videos according to the mouse position. So uh, let's dive in. First of all, we need to open our JavaScript code. I already opened it in Visual Studio Code, so I just dragged it from my folder and dropped it inside Visual Studio Code. And there it is. So, as we know, we have two files. One is the main file that uh, it's kind of responsible of loading the videos inside the, um, the JitMovie objects. And then we have the video player class, which contains a JitMovie object, which we call the movie player. And then a video plane on which we are rendering those movies. The video plane is basically this square. So now we need to get the mouse input inside our main file. So there is a way to get the mouse position directly from within JavaScript in Max, but I'm not going to show you yet because it's a bit complex. So we're going to keep that uh, uh, for the next uh, videos. So for the moment, we are simply going, uh, first let me stop the rendering. So let me move a bit, whoops, let me move a bit our graph that explains how the objects are related a bit downstairs. Oh, and if you're wondering why my Max is white, it's because I'm using the light skin, uh, which you can get here into options, preferences, basic, uh, color theme, and I have the light color theme. Uh, the default one is the default, of course, and this is the light one, which I find pretty nice to look at, especially during the day. So, great. Uh, what we want to do is to send the message to the JIT world. Send window. So this is a message that we are actually sending to the window contained inside the JIT world. Uh, mouse idle one. Idle one. So we send it this message, uh, which is the wrong message. It's actually called idle mouse. I always get this wrong. So idle mouse, the other way around. Good. So if we connect the message box, uh, the right inlet of a message box now to the um, third output of the JIT world, we can see that it's giving us the mouse position in screen coordinates out of that outlet, uh, the mouse position from inside the rendering window. So this is exactly what we need. All right, uh, very well. Now we need to pass that. Uh, basically, we need the first two numbers because this is the X position and the Y position. So we can root the root object mouse idle exactly so this will give us only the numbers without the word mouse idle good and from that we only need the dollar uh, one and dollar two we need only two components the first two components so if we check now it's just giving us the x and the y screen position of the mouse great so we now need to send this inside our um, javascript so let's first create a function that will allow us to basically receive these numbers. So let's create it up here before our jitter listener. So function, and let's call it mouse screen chords. So this is taking the mouse X and the mouse Y as an input, right? And let's maybe try just to print them. So uh, actually with the post line, function we can post mouse x and mouse y okay just to check that everything is working and then we can post a new line with an empty with an empty oh oh this is actually called post not post line actually and we can post a new empty line with a simply writing post without any thing inside any argument cool so now we can call this function uh, which we just called mouse screen cards. I will put this in a prepend object. And then we are passing uh, the name of the function followed by the two coordinates. So uh, let's check this out. Uh, as you can see, it's posting. Uh, let's actually create a console like this. As you can see, it's posting them on the console. So great, it's working. Now, what we need to do is to convert them 
uh, into world coordinates because by default so by, for the moment this is just screen coordinates so they will start from zero here when we are in the top right corner and then they will go all the way down to the size of the window minus one so this will be zero zero i know you cannot see it because of my face so if we go up here this is zero zero and then we go all the way down to the top uh, uh, bottom right corner this will be the size of the window minus one all right so we need to transform them from screen coordinates into world coordinates and we can do that using our using a sketch object so a ggl sketch object so let's create one here let's call it sketch and it's going to be a new jitter or oh, maybe this is a bit small let's make this bigger this is going to be a new jitter object uh, which is called jit gl sketch and it draws for the moment uh, let's say that it draws to our draw to attribute which is the name of my jit world right and uh, cool so we can say inside here we can say the post uh, oh, oh is this auto completion makes me crazy uh, we can say sketch dot uh, uh, screen to world and this is a function that transforms the the coordinates of the mouse uh, from screen coordinates into world coordinates and this is a function that is a property either of the ggl render object and of the ggl sketch object so both of these objects can perform this function so we are using this time the ggl sketch to perform it and this we need to pass it an array which contains the mouse x position and the mouse y position okay so this should be cool let's post a new line by simply writing an empty post statement empty post function cool uh, let's go here and see what is coming out all right cool so if this will be working now we should see that when we are at the top of the window we see the number one for the y and then we can see that when we are at the bottom of the window we should see the numbers minus one now this is not working because uh, uh, our camera here is, is using a perspective projection it's not using an orthographic projection so actually the this world coordinates of the mouse are completely wrong because we are not using an orthographic projection if we would use an orthographic projection on the camera so we write ortho2 uh, now let's check now, as you can see, it's correct. When I arrive at the bottom of the window, it gives us minus one. When I arrive at the top, it gives us a, a one. And when uh, I arrive at the left uh, for the X, uh, it gives us the ratio of the window and so on. So we actually need to add, uh, so we actually need to make this JGL sketch object render to a context which has a camera that is that has the property ortho2 so it's using an orthogonal projection not a perspective projection so actually we need to create another context inside our javascript on which um, our ggl sketch can render so that it has uh, exactly the coordinates as we want them so we actually have such a context in which the camera is uh, as R2 2 and this is our node context now the problem with the node context is that it has adapt zero so it means the node is all, always going to have the same dimension so the um, the buffer containing the image in the node context is always going to have the same dimension which by default is 512 by 512 so this doesn't work for us because we want to have it in a we want the sketch to render in a context that has a camera with orthographic too but also that that's the same dimension as our rendering window so we have to create a new context so i will call it dummy dummy context so dummy node for example so that's a new jitter object jit gl node another one as we created before uh, which also draws to our draw two um the difference is that it has adapt one so dummy node dot adapt equal one and also it has capture one so dummy node dot capture one because we want to capture the, the sketch object so we can now say that the sketch object draws to our dummy node dot name cool um let's see if this is actually working now uh, let me get this down here all right so we can now see that uh, the ggl sketch transforming the coordinates in the correct way even though we didn't assign really a camera with ortho 2 uh we should actually do it but apparently it does it also automatically is already rendering the is already 
transforming the coordinates in the proper way like if you would have a camera that has an ortho 2 but just to be explicit about it let's create a camera that has ortho 2 so let's call it dummy camera and that's a new jitter object jit gl camera which draws so let's say dummy camera dot draw two that's going to be the dummy node name dummy node dot name and dummy camera as also auto set to two so now we are explicitly drawing um explicitly the camera now is auto two so now we need to our sketch needs to render of course to our dummy node dot name okay great let's check if this works so exactly we arrive at the end of the world this should be minus one we're at the top this should be one for the epsilon and then this should be the size of the camera minus uh, this should be the size uh, this should be the windows proportion uh, in the negative and this should be the windows proportion in the positive for the x perfect uh it's working great um right I think I don't want to mix too many things in these videos. I want to keep them kind of short and focused on one single topic. So I would like to stop it here. Just one thing that I want to show you. So if you are on a Mac and this is not the location where the videos are in your uh, in your computer for Macs, you can do that. So in order to get the path where the Macs application resides, I created a little snippet, which is this one. Basically, you send the message, uh, send up path to Max. Then you create a receiver with the same name that you set here. So receive path. And yeah, that's if you send this message, uh, this is the path in our computer where the Max application resides. Then you can add to this path the resources media jitter address. And then you can send this as a load folder address. So if we click on this, uh, this will give us the same result. Should give us the same result exactly it's loading the folder containing all the max uh, uh, default movie files inside our videos uh, inside our video planes here okay cool so that's a little nice thing to notice max send up path will give us the address on our computer or where the max application resides so we can also access then all the stuff in the resources folder good so i said i don't want to make this longer than that I hope this was clear. If you have some questions, I'm always uh, available. And uh, you can check my Patreon to download the patch. And for everything, you can get in contact with me through Discord, if you are a patron of mine. And uh, cool. See you soon in the next video in which we are going to progress on our uh, object. Cool. So thank you for following and see you soon. Ciao.